Thing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with gold, official weight, 126 pounds. His professional record, 27 victories, including 18 knockouts, nine defeats, two bouts, even. Thomas Caballeros de Ciudad Obregón, Mexico, the IBF, number one ranked challenger in the world, Orlando City Salido. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with white. Official weight, 126 pounds. His professional record, 19 victories, including 12 knockouts, only one defeat, and one draw. Representing the Bay Area from Gilroy, California, the reigning, defending, IBF, featherweight champion of the world, Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Gentlemen, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to tell you now is when I tell you to stop, what that means is stop whatever you're doing and give me a clean break. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Anything on this belt is going to be good. Anything on this belt is going to be good. Good luck. Both fighters can box. Both fighters can brawl. Who will bring out the beast in the other? Well, there's tremendous incentive here for Salido, who feels like he's been overlooked for quite some time. But Robert Guerrero is one of the proud items in Goose and Tudor Promotions' rapidly burgeoning stable of stars, and they think maybe he can become the main man in the featherweight division. Or maybe move up and chase fights at 130 against the various stars in that weight class. Marco Antonio Barrera, Manny Pacquiao, Eric Morales. If Morales can maintain his star status on November 18 against Pacquiao. Right now they're testing each other. Good right hand across the top for Salido. Guerrero is a guy who's equally comfortable fighting inside or outside. Good southpaw uppercut by Guerrero makes some space for him to dive in and try to keep going against Salido. Salido comes back, giving as good as he's getting stop, stop, stop. as yeah. they fight on the inside. And now Robert Bird wants both fighters to be aware of their heads. Guerrero seems to be fighting as a power puncher in this fight here. And particularly his left uppercut to the body seems to put a lot of power on it. Not much really speed feet are hand for small guys. That left uppercut to the body is his best punch, Emmanuel. Yeah. He beat Eric Aiken with it, using it over and over and over. And it takes his toll eventually, but he's, he's power punching. I thought for smaller guys, it would be maybe trying to box him more. He's a patient fighter. Realizes that his style makes it imperative for him to go hard seven, eight, nine rounds in a row to wear the opponent down. He was saying that when he, I think his 10th fight, he started fighting 10-rounders, and fighters who were just barely going to limit with him when he was fighting four rounds, he was able to knock them out then because he needed to longer rounds. Stop, stop! Who's stronger, who's faster? Let's go. They're still trying to find out. Guerrero went to the Olympic trials trying to make the Sydney Olympic team what, what the way? You go, you go. at age 16. In fact, he was born on the date which was the minimum age limit for entry into the United States Olympic boxing trials. So as his manager says, he'll be the youngest fighter ever at the stop, trials stop, unless stop, stop. somebody was born a few Dude, minutes before him. Dude, him and made it to the semifinal round. And that good uppercut to the body inside by Robert the Ghost Guerrero. So far, the most dominating punch of the whole fight has been pretty much his left uppercut. But most fighters use the uppercut almost oh, exclusively as a blow to the head. Guerrero uses it repeatedly as a body punch. And the way they're fighting, though, you've got to be really concerned about some head but the way the heads are colliding sometimes. That's what Robert Bird has been looking for since the opening bell. And two good left hands by Guerrero to punctuate the round. The first of them 
Emmanuel pointed it out, that good uppercut in the body. When we go to the corner for Salido, where they speak Spanish, our interpreter is Ray Torres. That's it. Don't go to that left side. He's getting you. Now it's your turn now. Yeah. Don't don't hit him in the too low. Give him some water. Okay. For that left uppercut and that left to the body, 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 body. Tight defense, mijo. Yeah, breathe, mijo, breathe. Take hey, his nice hey, drop your shots a little lower. Right here, you see Guerrero land a good left uppercut, I think, but this bunch that followed was a punch up on top. He set him up by hitting him with so many left uppercuts to the body that the opponent Salido had his hands down looking for a body punch and instead the punch came to the head. Tommy Box numbers in round one. Good busy round. Guerrero 17 out of 91. Salido 12 out of 93. Neither landing at a particularly high percentage but both throwing a high punch total in the first round. Second round of this featherweight bout. Guerrero won a title belt in his victory over Eric Aiken back in September. Now looks to solidify his hold on a high spot in the division. Stop, stop, stop. Looks as though Break. this fight is going to be fought in the trenches, Emmanuel. Yeah, and Salido seems to, to me, maybe I'm giving, seems like he's seemingly given a little bit. Maybe maybe I'm off, but I think the power punching of Guerrero is starting to be effective with it. No, I'm with you. I think he's giving ground more freely than he did in the first round, and I think the uppercuts to the body and that maybe that one good left-hand shot upstairs have been enough to discourage him just a little bit. Yeah, because he don't know now whether the left hand is coming from underneath or coming to the head. Stop! Guerrero says that he grew up in the farm fields around Gilroy, but he didn't harvest garlic. Raspberries, chilies. In fact, he thought he had the good job when his mother canned the chilies for the winter. He helped with that. Right, stop, guys, stop. That's probably inside stop. work. Stop. Yeah, it's a go. lot of farming go. area all in that whole area up there in California. Spectacular soil. <laughs> he says that when he lost the one fight to Gamaliel Diaz a year ago, Break. His father had been removed Box. from his training team. And that discomfited him along with some other things that were bothering him at the time. So he asked for his father to be brought back. Hey, and go. once that took place, he had his comfort zone again and has been winning ever since. Well, he's got John Bray as the head trainer now. He brought his father back, but his father's operating in the capacity as the assistant trainer. But he is back. John Bray is very big on constructing a fight plan and sticking with it. He says that's been the big improvement in Guerrero over the course of the past two years is his ability to hear, listen, and follow a plan. But basically what he wants him to do is destroy the body of Salida. That's mainly what he's trying to do more than anything else. Well, I believe that they believe that you can impose your will on Salido, that he'll back off and be content uh, to lose comfortably. But so far, Salido is staying in. Giving as good as he's getting as we come down the stretch of what has been a physical round two. Guerrero fighting with a little smile on his face as if he likes the physicality of the fight. That's Salido good. has come on strong in the last minute of this round. That's all. A good sweeping right hand for Salido to finish up the round. You wake up. You got to wake up. Have him more. You got to press this guy back and jab, and, but keep him at the end of that jab. When you start throwing your punches, I need them to be short, yeah, chopping worry. combinations. Not one at a time, not two at a time. I need four and five at a time. Yeah, you're ready for four Listen, hours, baby. bang the body, bring it up the middle. Do you understand me? Let's do this. I'm gonna beat you to the punch, baby. Come on. Keep your hands high and tight. Yeah. You, you left, make believe you're fighting a right-handed. Keep pressuring him. Yeah. Finish with that right hand. You're doing fine. You won this round. That round is yours. Right here, you see Salido land a right hand to the chin. I think because Guerrero is not even looking for anything coming back. He's so 
intent on being aggressive that he's not even expecting punches to come back. That was Alito's best punch of the fight. It punctuated the end of round two. All right, stop, guys, stop. That was a very hey. even round. Hey. CompuBox numbers finding Box. Salito landing 19 out of 76, Guerrero 18 out of 76, and if the difference between 19 and 18 was that one sweeping right hand, it hey, decided hey, the hey, round hey, no, on Harold Letterman's scorecard. Let's go, Box. So a good beginning to the fight. Both guys making their statements early. Salito finding some holes in Guerrero's defense and far more comfortable now than seemed to be the case in round one. Yeah, Gu Guerrero is actually kind of mugging for the most part. He's still he's being very physical and not too much really speed or feet or hands for small guys, though. They're both just banging in there. And Guerrero got his nickname, The Ghost, as an amateur because of his ability to move in, move out, disappear in front of his opponents. He sure doesn't fight like a ghost anymore. No, he's just fighting a physical fight right now. He's no longer even using footwork. He's trying to muscle this guy around and basically just wear him out by just muscling him instead of landing clean punches, it's keeping a distance. Well, it had the makings of a potential phone booth fight, and they're moving in that direction now as round three comes to the midway point. Pick him up, Masariba. Masariba. Fight is scheduled for 12 rounds and has gotten off to a fast-paced start. So fatigue, endurance, they could be big factors down the stretch. Guerrero is very, very offensive-minded, and as a result, he's getting caught with a lot of clean punches. And even in this round, he's got caught with about three good clean shots when he's coming in. So intent on just being offensive. But Guerrero seems willing to take his chances on getting hit if he can lean on Salito and try to out-physical him for 36 right. minutes. He, he feels that he's a much physically stronger guy, and he, eventually he will wear out Salito. Now, what does it do to the legs of the fighter in the black trunks? to have the guy in the red trunks leaning all over him like this, man. Oh, it, it, especially when you're having to back back. If you both end trade punches and the guy who's back and back loses is weakened as the fight goes on as compared to the guy who's pushing forward. And that's what's happening as Guerrero is simply shouldering forward using his shoulders, his chest, his head, his legs, his hips, all to carry Salito around the ring. Exactly. And Salito appears to have faster hands. Agreed. He's landing the cleaner blows to me. Even though he's been out of muscle, but he's landing the cleaner shots. And now Salito, who also seems intent on trying to steal rounds, flurries again in the last 30 seconds, just as he did in round two. Moments ago, the referee 